Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Is it bright out here? Let me, let me darken that thing up. It's just one of those uh, some biscuits kind of days, if you know what I'm saying. I, I've been saying this for weeks, but it's like I cannot escape the crappiness of this outdoorness that is going on. My escape plan for this week was to take the crispy and head out of state, go to Mississippi, but guess what? There's a river flood um, warning or watch in that area I was going to go to for, uh, well, until the month of March. Let me say that again. Until the month of March. So that right there puts a big old x nay on it. So over the last couple days, I've been navigating my way through the mud and I am uh, really, really close to completing the coop. Or run, I should say. But this kind of gives me something to do while it's really crummy weather. Uh, you know, I was, got soaked yesterday working out here and it's just, I mean, look at that. It's nasty. But it gives me something to focus on while I can't hit the lakes. I mean, it is just an absolute turd floater out there. I've got some big trips coming up and I've decided that I'm gonna go get the chickens right now. Steph said she can handle it. While I'm away, we're gonna, I'm gonna get it settled here. But essentially three quarters of the run is completely enclosed. And I'm leaving this back uh, or this front quarter right here open so I can lower in uh, the coop. The coop is gonna go right in here. The run is huge, y'all. I mean, I could put like 20 chickens in here. I'm not going to do that, but. The trees, look at the, look at the work there. Going around the trees, I got one more to do uh, over here but I'm gonna wait until the actual coop comes in. Should be ready in a couple of weeks. Until then, they're gonna live in our old coop, uh, which is fine. It'll fit four chickens. I wanna go ahead and get them in here while we still got some light. I got a little bit of work to do, but they're coming home to roost, baby. They're coming home to the Rackley Roost today. The price of the, the eggs, like per, <laughs> per egg, uh, it has gone way up. I've been working on this run in coop, as you guys know for like a year. Steph loves eggs. I think she ate 487 eggs while she was pregnant. Might have been more than that. We just scarf them. And there's something about just getting your own home fresh eggs. That's just nice. Plus I want to be able to put other chickens in there that are friendly with Emmy so she can have you know some, some chickens, some little pets out there to grow up with. She loves the outdoors. She loves little animals. So I think she'll just absolutely love it. And I recently discovered a local farm store that carries six month old hens. And hens that are six months old are, are basically already laying or about to start laying. That's where ours were when they were killed. We are here at the farm store and we are about to get our chickens, y'all. Got them, y'all. Easy peasy. We got three. Um, from what I've read about this chicken breed, I think it is a mix between a uh, Rhode Island Red, which is a really good layer, and something else. So it's it's a mixture, literally bred for just tons of eggs. From what they told me at the store, they're pretty cold tolerant, which is good for right now. And they're more easy going than the Morans that we had. We had some Moran chickens that were a little testy. And I also saw in there they had the little baby silkies and they had the little barred rocks. And you never really want to buy chickens just one at a time. So it's always good to have a, a little size class group because they tend to pick on each other, literally pecking order. So you want to get them in little clicks or clucks. <laughs> hey, smash that like button. Guess what? It's time for these chickens to be free in a big home, y'all. The Rackley Roost is massive. Look at these sweet little gals. Look at these sweet little gals. They thought it was, they thought it was like evening time. They were settling down because it was dark. Oh, y'all are so sweet. We gotta get y'all a little training in. We gotta show you where everything is. We gotta get you ready for this big evening. I was looking at where they were sleeping and it was pretty open, like a pretty open situation. Nothing like the little house that they're gonna be going into, so. I gotta kind of teach them uh, how to get up on their little roost tonight. Big moment happening here. Big moments. Let's put you in, girls. 
let's shut the door. Their wings are not clipped, so they can fly. Um, I do need to cover this up, that is a thing. Okay girls, you ready to hang out in your new home? Come on out, you don't have names yet. Fishing freaks are gonna, gonna help me name you. Wow, they're like really comfortable inside of there. That's good, because their coop is not that big. All right, I think we're gonna have to encourage them a little bit. Come on out, come on out. There you go. There you go. The first one out. Oh, girl number two. And three. Look at you pretty girls. Look at you pretty girls. Oh yeah, y'all are gonna shred this place. One thing good about having tons of leaves here at the treehouse is that I can bring more in and then put them in this run area and then let them scratch it around and tear it up. They will literally just shred this to it'll just be dirt. So, yeah, get in there. Get in there, poke around a little bit. We're gonna get your uh, accessory set up here and uh, do a little work here just to finish your enclosure. But welcome to the Rackley Roost. Okay, girls, got a big surprise for you. Some nice fresh grains. Fresh organics, this is where the other feeder was, and there's now a uh, corn crop growing in here. So, probably need to pull that out. <sighs> this is your hen house. It's here to protect you, for now. Until we get the big one. A little temporary home. You wanna come in here? I need to show you how to go to bed. One of them has gone inside of the coop. Oh, check it out, check out the digs. Curious. They are just scratching their way to happiness, y'all. They're eating all these earthworms that are fresh from the rain, all these bugs that are filled inside of here from not having any chickens in here for I don't even know how many months now, but just kicking over these leaves, they're just shredding it up. And my favorite lady of them all, coming in to see your, your new flock members, babe. I brought them dinner and wine. <laughs> it's wine night for the chickens. Just kidding. Celebrating. <laughs> I'm off to a wine night, but look how cute they are. Yes, they're sweet little babies. I've got a babysit Emmy. Uh, Mama LFG's got her right now while I take care of the chickens and then um, Daddy Duty taking over. Man, I just realized there's a lot of girls around here. Oh yeah, we're wow. taking Y'all are taking over. I need I need a male dog. Because, I need a Winston. It's because us girls are just, we're so great. You gonna take care of these babies while I'm gone on my fishing trips? I guess I have no choice, do I? Yeah, you got more girls to take care of. Hey, as long as they're sweet, I'll, Emmy and I will have a blast. They are sweet. They're little sweeties. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Y'all, I think this is the sweetest one right here. I think I'm going to be adding some more, but supposedly these are just primo egg layers. They were 25 bucks. I think if you get chicks, they're like five, five bucks, but six months old, they just found their feed and they haven't quite figured out their water yet. They had a different watering system. I've got one with some nipples on it. So they gotta figure out some nipples. I've noticed too, they keep looking up and they've heard crows a few times and they, they're, they're real suspicious, you know, they're not used to having trees above them. So that's gonna be a thing, but overall, I'm happy with these chickens, y'all. There used to be so much more fun to hang around than those other ones. Okay, sweet pea, put you down. See, she'll even like perch on me, which is cool. Okay. <sighs> Feast up, get ready to make some eggs. Come on now, don't forget why you're here. Gotta put you to work. So the run is basically done for now. Just gotta build a couple more panels. This is my first big structure I've ever built. Kind of proud. Moving on from chickens to some archery news, y'all. One thing I've been meaning to show you. I know you saw the video the other day where I basically rigged out this bow with my buddy, uh, John Thomas Earl Larkin, this new Bowtech Revolt. It is a straight hog jammer. I took a couple of evenings, sighted it in, 
And y'all, I have missed a three pin sight. I gotta tell you, that's what I learned on. Uh, that was my first bow that I ever got was a three pin. And then I got like a good three pin. I got one of those spot hogs and that really made a big difference for me. And this is a, is a brand I haven't used before. It's black gold, but nothing but good things to say about it. It was like high, it's really high quality. Um, solid it's small um, and I just love that three pan it is it is sexual chocolate it just it's easier for my eyes it's for me it may not be the best for a Western everything but my it's my overall favorite so I'm gonna take a couple of shots with it show you guys the groups here at 30 and 20 yards it's pretty insane and the way I've sighted in this this black gold sight y'all this has a sight tape on it and it's dial out. It's like my old spot hog. So that bottom pin, which is 40, that's my floater pin. And I can basically adjust this knob and go to any distance that I want, all the way out to 100 yards. I tested it by shooting at 20 and 60. And basically the rate of speed that it came out to it was 283.5 feet per second. Let's not get too far into the math because I'm a Texas Aggie and math just doesn't really go well for me. Let me just take a shot and let it speak for itself. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna cut right here. I'm just gonna straight roll. I didn't even range that. Coming off the tripod, okay? I have seriously never shot a bow that has been this dialed like right away like I've hardly had to do anything to it I think my buddy JT had a lot to do with getting it right but ladies and gentlemen I mean that's nearly dead bull nearly dead bull when I was really sighting in the bow I was I was shooting just in line from 20 out to 60, like all my arrows were straight. There's three axes on sights. And that's the only thing that I haven't exactly checked with a level is the third axis. But it must be daggum on, because it is shooting really, really well. Let's take a shot at 20, see what it does. I got a pretty good idea. Actually, let's, let's do 25. 25 yards, okay, right here. I'm gonna set this up so you guys can watch. I'm not gonna dial at all. I'm just gonna aim between my 20 and 30. And that should get us pretty close. Oh my gosh, this 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 bow, y'all. It's a savage. Maybe it's not the bow. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's JT tuning my bow. <laughs> but I don't know what it is. The combination is nasty. Y'all, that wasn't even an exact pin. That was just a aiming in between, which is normally, that's like your more realistic shots, you know? You get a, you get a deer at like 20, 27, 28 yards where you have to make those little, look, look, just, just take you a gander. Take you a gander at that. That's two shots. That's at two different distances. I'm not saying this because Bowtech sent me the bow, but this is the best I've ever shot with a bow. Just off the bat, like having confidence key i say this all the time in fishing if you have a rod and reel combo that you just know like you can skip it up under a tree or you have a confidence lure or you know something that's going on just go with that even though there might be something better bigger and better out there if you have confidence in it you can be unstoppable so i am so excited to hunt with this bow this season i'm even thinking about doing a little turkey hunting with it i've never killed a turkey to kill one with a bow would be Extremely exciting, huge accomplishment. Also, if any predators walk up on my new little sweethearts out here, I might just plunk them in the grill because that's how accurate I'm shooting right now. So I'm gonna put the bow away. I have to go pick up Emmy. This is the last thing I gotta do today, y'all. If we have time, I'm gonna show her the chickens in the light. She is super obsessed with farm animals. She has a little a farm animal toy, a little Farmer John toy called pigs, cows, and chickens and everything. So I want to see her reaction. All right, sweet baby girl. Let's go, it's getting dark. It's getting dark. We gotta make sure our chickens are alive. Oh my God, they're not in the thing. Oh, this is not good. Oh, one of them has gotten out. Oh my gosh. What happened here? 
Amy. Amy, we have a chicken. We have a chicken on the loose. I know. I know. He got out. Okay, sweet girl. Man, I have got a lot going on, guys. I've got a toddler and I've got a chicken. I need to get back in here. Okay, girl. Girl. I know, Amy. There's multiple chickens. Man, I'm just gonna put the camera down, guys. Come here, come here, sweet girl. Come here. Come here. Assuming you could just fly down from there. There you go. Come on, Amy, we gotta put them up. Girls, I'm gonna need you to go in to your coop. No, 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 no. I know you wanna, I know you wanna roost, but that is not the way, that is not the way to go. Get inside here. Yeah, go. Get, get inside there. <laughs> Amy, are you freaked out a little bit? <laughs> yeah, they're okay. They're okay, Amy, I promise. Okay. I think we're gonna have to like physically put them in here, Amy. So if you could hold the camera, that'd be great, but you can't. Okay. Oh, no, no. Go this way. Go this way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this last one needs to get up on there. That's right. That's right, girl. Get up on there. Hear me, girl? <laughs> what were those? Were those birds? Were those our chickens? Were those our chickens? I don't think I've ever done an outro, just me and Emmy. So, go ahead and smash it. Yes, we're going to say bye bye to them. Y'all, that was a little chaotic there. I'm glad. We did not go with the uh, electrical wire around the top for the Predators. We're going with the full-blown enclosure because they can still fly out. And that way I don't have to clip their wings or worried about it. I'm going to have to go ahead and build those other panels like tomorrow uh, while they're up and running around. I'll just have to like place them up there so they can't get out. And then when the coop comes in, I'll actually screw them in and lock them down. Yeah, I know. Those are my dangle toys, Emmy. Those are not for you though. We got plenty of toys for you upstairs. I gotta go give her a bath, y'all. I'm actually gonna be keeping her for a whole entire day. That is my gift to Stephanie for Valentine's Day. I think I'm gonna vlog it. Me? I know. We're gonna have lots of fun. Thanks for hanging out with me today, y'all. If you wanna stay tuned for more action with the chickens, looks like there's gonna be a lot. Go ahead and subscribe right here to the channel and I'll leave a link down below for the Lake Life Family channel where you can check out our family vlogs. I'll see you guys soon on the next video. God bless you. We'll see you on the next one. Bye bye. Come here, girls. Come here.